Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 84. Today's guest is the one and only Clyde Butcher. So we're going to talk about Clyde's upcoming exhibit at the Dolly Museum in St. Pete. But first, I've got a couple things to say. Are you the type of person who likes things shown to you in a step-by-step -step manner? If you are, you will love our classes. At Understand Photography, our motto is, we simplify the technical. So we try to start everyone out with the four weeks to proficiency in photography. It's an online class, but it's a live class. So I'm there teaching, I'm there right with you. So if you can't figure out like which button to push or which dial to turn, I'm right there to help you. It's a four week class. You've got homework, you've got critiquing, you're going to learn, you're going to get a great foundation in photography. So look at our website, understandphotography.com. The next class starts May 2nd. And while you're there, check out, we've got hundreds of blog, blog articles, we've got trips coming up, all kinds of stuff. This show, the Understand Photography Show, is broadcast live on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Understand Photography Facebook page. Then we put the video on YouTube and we upload the audio as a podcast on iTunes. So just do a search under the Understand Photography Show and you will find us. Please subscribe, comment, review. So today we are going to be talking to Clyde Butcher. Now, if you don't know who Clyde Butcher is, you've been living under a rock. Clyde um, is our most famous photographer in Florida, at least, maybe in the whole United States. I mean, I've been out in the middle of nowhere and people say, what are you doing out here in, uh, in uh, Oregon? Yeah, what were you doing in Oregon? You're ours. You're supposed to be here. I know. That's <laughs> what they say. Uh, you're not supposed to be out here. You're supposed to be out there in the swamp. That's right. <laughs> um, Clyde was inspired to create the large format images mm -hmm. by the great Ansel Adams, right? Yep. He was one of your inspirations. Along with uh, Wynn Bullock and Everett Weston. Okay. Those names I don't know. I should. You should. Yes. Uh, Edward Weston uh, was actually uh, kind of inspired Ansel Adams. Ah. And when Bullock was on the arty side of landscape. Oh. Um, Before digital. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't uh, yeah. even a thought. <laughs> no, it wasn't even a thought. Um, yeah. It, it was, I think he passed away in 1970. Okay. Um, he was a uh, really neat, neat guy. Um, have you ever seen the Family of Man book? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Family okay, of Man. You're like, work with me here. <laughs> Family of Man was a project um, by, what is the guy? Uh, um, I was, I'm not sure it was New, Beaumont Newhall. Anyhow, it was. It, presented in 1954. Okay. It was a show of, gosh, I don't know, 300 images, 400 images oh. from birth, had a section on birth. This is, now these are pictures from people from all over the world. Okay. And then they had uh, romance, weddings, death. Ooh. <laughs> so it was basically a family, a man from the beginning to the end. Okay. And when, when Bullock has the, had the leading shot in the show, oh. which my daughter doesn't like. Oh, now I have to go look it up. Yeah, and then the shot is uh, it's done in a redwood forest Okay. with uh, his uh, daughter who's about three years old laying nude in the, in the fern. Oh. And some people take it as a birth okay. of a man, and she took it as the death. Oh, of a three-year-old. Yeah. That's too sad. So, yeah, you can look at it several different ways. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, but it's, I have the picture. I bought the original. You're kidding yeah. me. Oh, my yeah. God. I wonder how much that's worth. Uh, about 30000 Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's eight by ten inches. It's just a small picture. Mm -hmm. Wow. $30,000 for a piece of paper. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, for, for Ansel Adams, just sold way, I mean, a couple of years, several years ago. Uh, he, he was dead. But uh, 16 by, no, it was 2024 of Moonrise over Hernandez sold for 600000 Wow. 
crazy. So, so photography has been, um, as a collector items, probably one of the best things you could ever, much better than the stock market. Yeah, holy cow. That's that's very good to know. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, and when we were talking a little beforehand and I told you I was working, doing the event photography at the Naples Art Association. Mm -hmm. And when I started there in 2009, there was you and one of your protégés, I think, Jeff, I forgot his name. Ripple. Yes. And that was it. There were there was there was no photography on the walls at all. And now, if you walk in there, it's mostly photography. So I think people are really starting to appreciate photography as a true art form. Well, now. When I started when I started photographing Florida, um, nineteen actually it was eighty three. Okay. Um, when I first came here, I didn't see anything to photograph. Oh, you're kidding no, me! I'm California. You know, I knew that you were from the there's west. There's no big mountains here. There's no you know there's no 300 foot trees and such. So um, I was looking around at people photographing out there, photographing Florida's birds and gators. Yeah. They're still doing it. Yeah. Which is kind of cute, you know. People really like birds. <laughs> well, it's a challenge. It's really, a, that's probably the hardest thing to photograph in photography. Well, it's better than shooting with a gun. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in fact, a lot of people, hunters, have gone from hunting to photographing. Ah, interesting. They hunt with a camera now. Well, you're right. It is better. Yeah. So, so I tell you what, some people can, I mean, are amazing bird photographers. Mm -hmm. I'm not that into birds, but some of the pictures that I've seen are like, wow, I would want that on my wall. Well, I have a couple of good shots. Do you? Uh, they were taken from my porch. I had my camera set up on the porch. I had uh, eight, to, eight, eight to twelve hundred millimeter lens. Okay. And I had it's air conditioned porch, so it's by the window. So I see someone down. This is back in the, in the swamp where uh, our house is. Okay. I see someone interesting. I walk up, run upstairs, open the window, take a picture, close the window. Wow. And that was my concept of uh, bird, bird photography. photography. Yes. I think I photographed an owl when I was at your place. I got four or five good shots. <laughs> yeah, but, four uh, or five. <laughs> but they were in a natural settings too. Really. I mean, they weren't just pictures of the birds. Yeah, that's interesting. So, now tell me about. Let's talk a, l a little bit about large format photography. What made you decide to get into large format photography, or w was that what there is? I don't even know that. I don't have a big history of photography. Well, I actually started in school, in architectural school, photographing. And then when I got out, I started photographing with a 4x5 because in architectural photography, you have to have detail. Right. Everything has to be super sharp. Yeah. And then, uh, actually, I was dating Nikki, and their folks went up to Yosemite once uh, every summer. Uh, I don't know if it was once or twice. It might have been twice. I think it was twice. So I, I saw Ansel Adams work up there in 61. Wow. And I could have bought a Moonrise of Hernandez for 75 bucks. Ah. <laughs> Anyhow. Ah. So that said, I said to myself, this is kind of interesting, photographing nature, different. Uh, so I started trying to emulate uh, Adams and Weston and Bullock. So, okay. Because back in the 60s, what was art photography? Uh, yeah, I don't you know. Actually, actually, art photography has been around a long time. But as a uh, common for the normal people, it's very, very young. Right, right. Uh, it started back, you know, probably in 1850s. Yeah, and that's really you know? not that long ago if you no. in the scheme of the it's world, right, you know? Right. And um, so I got excited about that. And so I was, when I had over the weekends, we'd go out photographing. And, uh, and in 69, um, I uh, decided to be a photographer instead of an architect. So did you actually go to work as an architect mm -hmm. when you got out of college? Uh, five years. Ah. And um, now did you just like, 
quit. You just quit? You had no safety net. Mm -hmm. Did you have kids and everything by that time? Mm -hmm. Wow, that was, that was brave. Uh, ooh, unless you're brave or stupid. <laughs> well, it worked out. <laughs> well, uh, we ended up you know, losing our house and- uh, Oh, it didn't uh, but, work out right away. <laughs> we, had, we had a space like, like this for a studio and we lived in a tent trailer. Oh, okay. Four of us. Wow. So we'd have to go from state park to state park because you like to spend two weeks. So we'd keep moving around. Oh my know. gosh. And uh, then got a partner. And when I was doing small images, and then I said, I think I need to, in architecture, one of the things you learn is how you see. Okay. They, they try to teach you how to see because you want to try to get people into that building. Right, so. And you, you realize you only see about four degrees. Okay. People think they see this broad spectrum. Yeah. They perceive it, but they don't see it. Really? No. Okay. If you look at me, my eyes, you can maybe tell there's something over here, but you can't see it. Right. So if you want to see it, you have to scan over here. You're right, you're right. Scan over there. So if I'm, <clears throat> I decided that if I make my pictures large, People would have to scan them, and they would feel like they were there. Ah. It wasn't the size. It wasn't like uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, where he made, she made her huge flowers. Right. Uh, that was a purely graphic thing. But my uh, concept was getting people into the picture. Because you were really attracted to landscapes from the beginning. From the very beginning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and you lived somewhere so beautiful. Oh, I went to school in San Luis Obispo, California, okay. and uh, Yosemite was not that far away, and uh, Redwood Forest, and... Uh, it's beautiful. Redwood it? Forest really uh, was my first really exciting place. Uh, these trees are like 300 feet high, you I've know. never been there. I've never been to that area of, of oh. the world yet. Well, it's very similar in some respects to an old growth cypress forest. Okay. Is the same kind of feeling. They're affecting their relatives, the cypress. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. They don't lose. They don't lose their needles, though. Okay. Like the cypress do. In fact, that we found a cypress tree up on Santa Fe. It was 53 feet in circumference. The largest redwood tree is 53 feet. 53 feet? Uh huh. Where was that? Up on the Santa Fe River. Oh my God. Hey, you know what? I'm going to change the subject real fast. Are okay. you going to Dead Lakes next week? No, I don't think I can. I'm but not you sure. Were you, were, you were planning on it, yeah, right? Yeah, but I... But you're, I, you I, fell. I, we haven't decided yet. Okay, because Joe is... That's where Joe is. Oh, really? We do it. We, that's where I discovered that area a few yeah, years Dead ago, Lakes and I said, a, Joe, we've got to start doing photo trips to this area. Dead Lakes is a wild place. Oh, my gosh. But... You, but so you, the boat you, captain said, you, you, oh, Clyde Butcher's coming here. But you want to make sure that you go with someone who knows what, knows what they're doing. Matt, yeah. the boat captain, he's awesome. Yeah, because there's a lot of... Uh, stumps. Stumps. <laughs> yeah. And for the audience, if you don't know about Dead Lakes, it's up in the panhandle of Florida. Apalachicola area. Apalachicola area. And in the 1800s, a hurricane, I guess, dumped a bunch of salt water in, into a freshwater lake and killed all the cypress trees. And they were huge, like not, I don't know, about 53 feet, but they were big. And now they have smaller cypress trees growing out of the stumps. Yeah, it's yeah. so pretty up there. It's wild. Gosh, wild I lost my mind when I went up there. I was yeah. like, this place is so cool. <laughs> well, I, when, I, when I shot that, I was using a large format camera, which is very difficult. Oh my gosh. Because um, you're talking about a bright sun with, with this camera, you're talking about one second exposures. So what do you do? Do you have filters you, and? No. You what shoot an F64. Oh my gosh, that's right. You know, it's funny, I never heard of F64 until John Brady <laughs> said <laughs> something about shooting an F64. I said, F64? Well, no, I've shot, I shot a shot up in um, Sequoia, uh -huh. uh, close up of uh, corn lilies. Okay. I shot that at F128. Oh my gosh. It goes 64, 90, and 128, and then 256. Oh my gosh. That, was, that was a uh, 
10 minute exposure. Wow. And it was during the day? Yeah. Wow. Well, it was overcast. That's amazing. But yeah, dead lakes would be tough in the bright with all the reflections. Well, and it's just how do you get the cameras How do you get stable? it stable? How do you get it stable? Well, what we do is we were, some, we were in a, a lot of times, some of the time I was able to get in the water. It was what is the some, what is the bottom like? Is it mucky or is yeah, it it's a little mucky? But you have to you know it can only be about four feet. You get much more than four feet. You're you know. well. Plus, wouldn't the water movement? No, not on the tripod. No, it wouldn't affect it. I no. guess your tripod probably weighs a thousand pounds. No, it's not that bad. But you know, you sink it into the mud, good. And but when you do it on a boat, what we do is we would. Hopefully, stabilize the boat with a cypress tree, and hold on to it, and put a, a, po a pole in the water, and put the pole against the boat with your hand, hold oh, it. Oh, okay. And then uh, say, okay, nobody breathe. For two minutes. <laughs> you know, I've done I've done some wild shots uh, at one second exposures. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing to me. Well, a lot of the shots, and, and you get into the woods, in, anywhere from three to ten minutes. Wow. Because you have reciprocity failure. Okay. Which you don't even know what that means. No, I don't. Because you shoot digital. Yep. There's no such thing as reciprocity in digital. Okay, tell me what it is. Reciprocity is when the film, you, get, you don't have enough light, mm -hmm. the ASA actually drops. It's, the film is less sensitive and less sensitive and less sensitive. So it may say, uh, 45 second exposure. Okay. That's really 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. I don't fully understand that, but do I need to understand that? No, <laughs> that, that was digital. You don't understand that. No, no, no. No. That's one thing I've, I've been enjoying about the digital world. It's opened a lot of photography for me. Well, it's is it simpler or is it more complex? And s it's probably both. It's, 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 um, a different um, genre. It's just different, totally different. Now um, you started as a, when you decided to start shooting with digital cameras. You started with Canon, but then you switched to Sony. Yeah. I, I was experimenting with Canon, and it was only like 23 megabytes, you know. And the Sony came out with a 36. Now, one of the things I do with a digital, I use all tilt and shift lenses. Okay. Because, for one, I like panoramas, and two, uh, I like to have more megabytes. Okay. And three, if I, if there's a f uh, like a row of flowers, a field, uh -huh. I can tilt the lens, just like a large format. See, large format, all these tilts and shifts and everything, were important in large formats to try to get everything in focus. Okay. I got my big camera, my 12 by 20 camera, uh -huh. 110 degree lens, it's 210 millimeters. Okay, huh. Imagine getting everything in focus from three feet to infinity with 210 millimeters. I, I, yeah, that blows my mind. It's not that easy. So you have to have all these things to change the plane of focus. Okay. Where you use... Uh, so this... And what, what do you call this that's on the, on this the is, Sony? This, this, is this is called a art, uh, Cambo Artist. Cambo Artist. Yeah, and this in front here has, sh it has shifts this way, the lens. Okay. So say you have a pier and you want the whole thing in focus. Uh -huh. I can just shift the lens so the whole thing is focused wide open. That is so cool. Um, and then uh, if I want more sky, I just lower the bottom down. I want more foreground. I raise the bottom up, camera up. Okay. So you don't you don't do this up and down thing. You keep you always keep in landscape photography. You always keep the camera level because if, you, if the back of the camera gets out of level, you have distortion. Right. So you use the front of the camera to do all the manipulating to make it work. Now, for our podcast listeners, we're going to put a picture of this. Um, so it's a Sony A7? This is an A7R2. R2. 
with the uh, the Cambo artist. Cambo artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this the whole thing is uh, modular. Um, this is a um, bellows just pops right off. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. It's uh, magnets. Oh, how easy, too. They made it easy, too. Oh, yeah. It's made in the Netherlands. Um, if I can Here, I'll get it. Wow, that is easy. And for our podcast listeners, we're playing around with Clyde's camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the lens on it is a um, 35 millimeter off a Pentex 6, uh, 6, 645 camera. Now, do you have to have special lenses for the Sonys, or do, does no, this work can, with any lens because well, of this? You can't use a Sony lens. You can't use a Sony lens? No. You have to use the can, uh, so, well, something you, that you works use, with the... Could, see, the, can, the Sony is mirrorless. Okay. So the lenses are closer to the film plane. Ah. So they haven't got enough room here for the bellows. Okay. But a Canon lens, there's enough room to use the Canon lenses on this. Okay. Or Nikon. Or Pentax. Or Pentax. <laughs> or Hasselblad. Hasselblad, okay. That's uh, so cool. Actually, almost any lens made in the world you can put on this camera. Except the Sony. Except the Sony. <laughs> yeah. On your Sony camera. Yeah. But, but I don't use any Sony lenses, even when I don't use this mechanism. Uh, actually, now I'm using a Fuji uh, GFX 50 megabyte medium format. Oh. With the Canon lenses. Oh my gosh, I thought Fuji worked with Nikon lenses. No, we're talking about medium format. Oh, okay. The sensor is 33 millimeter, 34 millimeters by 44 millimeters. Okay. This is 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. Oh, okay. It's okay. 100, it's, it's uh, 1.7 times bigger than 35. Okay. So you okay. get the, the uh, little Hoosies, uh, it's the little things in the sensors, what they call them. And yeah, things that could collect the light mm -hmm. are bigger, so they're 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 more they're so, they're they're they capture better better light. Okay, the pixels. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, Canon makes a 50 megabyte, but okay. it's not as smooth, and it hasn't got the tonal range that the Fuji does. Okay. You can shoot that Fuji. I've shot. I'm shooting. 1200 ASA, I keep calling it ASA instead of ISO. ISO, yeah. <laughs> I can't get rid of the ISO. Uh, 1200 millimeters, I mean 1200 ISOs instead of you know, 100 or 400, and it looks perfect. Really? Yeah. Wow. So now, do you, do you just like to experiment with all this different stuff, or you're just no. looking, you haven't found no. your utopia for a camera yet? No. What I do is I, have an idea of what I want as a result, then I try to get the tools that will make that. And have you found it yet? We're getting there. Getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. The, the Fuji, I'm really liking the Fuji. Okay. Because um, I'm using the Canon tilt and shifts on it. So I get, I, I take three composures and put it together in Photoshop and they come together perfect. Okay. There's nothing, you just put it in merge and it merges. Uh, so it's been really working out nice. The, the, with the Sony, they make an adapter for the Fuji for this. Okay. But I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, this Sony's working fine with this camera. Okay. Because you can tilt the camera, you can tilt it vertical too. Oh, oh, all right. So uh, this g gives me a big panorama. If I tilt, it, tilt the camera vertical, it gives me more of a normal format. Okay. And you do, a, you mostly do horizontal type shots, but you do some verticals, yeah, right? A couple this verticals is a here. vertical here, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Because I like okay, I can shoot vertical with this at being horizontal. You don't have to move the camera. No, what what I do is I pull the camera down, take mm -hmm. a shot, bring it up, take a shot. Okay. So I can do a shot a vertical shot with the camera horizontal. Okay. So with then it's a you have all those extra megapixels. Yeah. That's what you like. Because you like it big. You like yeah. big pictures. Well, I'm, you know, eight, nine foot, you know, like I like eight, nine foot pictures. Yeah, you know? and so do I. I love your work. I yeah. love seeing big, big, it's just, you're right. It draws you in. You feel mm -hmm. like 
not like you're there, but yeah, it's 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 the digital world is um, a lot, uh, probably a well, I, I shouldn't say it's a bigger learning curve. To do anything well is difficult. Yeah. Um, there's very few people that know how to print black and white. I completely would agree with that, including me. <laughs> oh, of course, I'm printing. A printing is something that just yeah. is beyond me in general. Because yeah. well, you really have to really be, yeah. in my opinion, you have to be really smart to be a printer. Because or, there's so much to it. Or patient. Mm. And waste a lot of paper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people think you can make one print and that's it. Oh, oh, and, we, you, we, and we you, through, you, you're wasting a lot of paper when we you go waste. To at least minimum five to six prints before you get one. Oh, okay. Now, once you get one, do you just do the next one exactly the same, or does it? Well, do you still have sometimes, problems. Sometimes, sometimes uh, six months later, I say, "Oh, you know, I could do that." Okay, so you want to change it up or yeah. make it better? A little. And now my Photoshop uh, techniques were learned in the darkroom. I use the same techniques in digital worlds I do in the chemical world. Okay. So the dodging and the burning and... But it's not done with the dodge burning tool. No? No, no. That's a no-no. Oh, that's a no-no. No. You have to use a... What do you call it? Um, We have to use highlights, bit toes, and shadows all at the same time. Okay. Analog. Okay. You have to use analog te techniques in the digital world. All right. I don't. I don't know how to do it in the dark room. <laughs> well, that's the reason I was able to do what I've been doing, is because um, I, when I went to digital, because all of my books that we do, I, I do the scanning of the negatives. Okay. And I had to figure out how to make them look like a silver print. Oh, okay. So I learned the techniques doing our books. Okay. The first book I did myself, scan, was 2000. All right. And did somebody we, teach you the Photoshop, or did you just... Oh, uh, we tried that. No, you didn't have a good teacher. Oh, I'm sure they were good teachers. Not to you. But, but they, were, they were not photographers. Oh, they didn't get what you the looks and what you're trying to do. Uh, so how do you make it look natural in Photoshop? Using the analog techniques. Like what though? What does that mean? That's the whole discussion. Does well, that like sh well, basically using Adobe Camera Raw to bring out the oh, no, highlights that, or no. well, no. that's that's you do that you do. Okay, when you're doing black and white from digital, you have a color image. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is say, okay, what do I want this print to look like? Uh -huh. So then you have to change the colors in that print first. Okay, so... You know, if you want a darker sky, you make the sky bluer. Okay. If you want the yellow flowers whiter, you make them more yellow. Okay. And so you do all your, you do all your basic work in, in color. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, that's I mean, I know that you have the sliders for black and white that you can yeah. add red and... Yeah, but then, but then if you do it first in the color, oh, then you but you have to know what you want. Okay, so you have to be able to visualize. Right. Which is not always that easy. No. For you it is. I've been doing it 55 years. You get, a, you get, you get it like... I've been doing it a couple of years. <laughs> so... Uh, that's one of the main problems people have. They don't work with the color first. Okay. That's interesting. I'm going to experiment with that, yeah. with the black and white stuff now. Yeah. I'll have a DVD if you want to buy a DVD on... Uh, 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 sure, I will. What the heck? Uh, How much? 45 bucks. Okay, I can afford it. <laughs> uh, I hope you still have some copies left. It's yeah. I like DVDs, too, because you know what happens to me is... You uh, don't, if you want... You go to a Photoshop... A workshop, uh -huh. you forget one step, you've had it. Yeah, yeah. 
On DVD, I you just go back and say, oh, that's yep. what I did. It's easy to find. Yeah. All right, so let's talk okay. about let's talk about the Dolly Museum. So what happened mm -hmm. there? Did they contact you out of the blue or? Yeah. They just said, you're Clyde Butcher and we want you to go and to Spain well, and take pictures. They, th they felt that um, I'm giving the feeling of Florida. Yes. In my work. This is true. And Dolly, which I didn't really know until I got involved with him, that he was really involved with the landscape and coming up with his photographs. Okay. His paintings. Paint, yeah. And they thought that uh, it might be interesting if I could get the feeling of the landscape where he lived and bring it back. And um, so. I love that. It what was, a cool project. It was, it was scary though. So I've never done a commercial project. You've never done a commercial project? I've never photographed anything for anybody. Really? No. You've always been in fine art? Yep. Oh Since my. 60, 69. Oh, that would be scary then. Yeah. Take you right out of your comfort zone. <laughs> well, it has a week and a half. You only had a week and a half to do that whole thing? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So let, tell me about it. Oh. Well, we kind of got uh, in this. We went to Barcelona first just to kind of get the flavor of Spain. Have you been to Spain before? No. No, I've never been to Spain yet. The only place in Europe I've been is um, Czech Republic. That's an odd place to be the only place. <laughs> well, no, we, we did a, uh, in 2000, we did a, our millennia show there, the uh, National Gallery. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's cool. So I went cool. the year before to photograph some stuff for that show to mix with American stuff. Oh. And it took a whole floor of the gallery. Wow. So it was, it was well received there. It was in 2000. Wow. All right. So back to Spain. Okay. So you went to so, Barcelona. And uh, first we saw uh, Gaudi's work. Okay. Uh, Gaudi is a 1800, 1800s guy. I think he was born in the 1800s. And he was really, he was kind of like the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright of Europe. Okay. You know Frank Lloyd Wright? The architect? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his houses were just fluid. They, he knew uh, lighting because you have to realize when he was doing this stuff, there was very little electricity. There was oh, no yeah. air conditioning. Oh yeah, it's it hot in Spain. So you had to have figure a way of getting ventilation. And it was and everything he did. Like they, they, <clears throat> they had their they had water tanks up on the roof. Oh for yeah, pressure for the yeah. house. So he made sculptures out of these things. Oh Everything was God. a design. Oh, that is so cool. You would never think of, I mean, you, it's the whole, everything in the house was a design. Wow. And then this church that he designed, that's um, cathedral. La Sagrada Familia Basilica. Yeah. How about that for a Spanish I, accent? Yeah. <laughs> that was, they're still working on it. And I, I read about that. The, how long have they been working on that? It looks amazing, though. Did well, you get pictures of that? Hundred years. It's, I guess I don't know. I, I, I it looks amazing. And they're still was working. It, they're still bullying. Was it. it like mind blowing when you saw it? Yeah, it was just so many different aspects of it. It was. Uh, this stuff. Hundred years of, in the making, and it's yeah. not done yet. No. <laughs> well, in fact, uh, the. Um, they had the Olympics there. In Barcelona? Yeah, in 2004. Or no, I'm, anyway, I'm not good with dates. And that really brought people this, to the church, to okay. see the church. Uh -huh. Now the tourists, you have to pay you know, so much to go into it, is actually creating the money to keep it going. To keep wow, going. that's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome, though. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's really neat. I, I love that they're preserving the history, but they're still still working on it. Still working, and so this guy is, um, yeah, you know, immortalized. Yep. Literally, because yeah. he's. <laughs> but it was it was it was really an experience. Uh, we were there. They had a um, um, what do you call it? Not a riot, but a uh, demonstration. Okay. 
Uh, was th we were in the middle of it. It was 300,000 people. Oh, my gosh. What were they? What were they? Well, I guess once a month they just have a... a, a, a this group is demonstrating that. And this, I mean, it's just a bunch of different... Oh, my it's gosh. It's just like a big party. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, that was... And the food there is really interesting. Yeah? Not your, not your kind of food? My daughter says, "You guys, but you're going to order a hamburger, aren't you?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because one of the one of my jobs, because I do a lot of event photography, is working for this. Um, it's a it's a dinner club basically, and they they eat fine food, and fine wine. I can't pronounce it. It's la chen la chen de resistures. It's French, but uh, you know, they always invite me to eat, and I I don't have the palate. Mm -hmm. I just it's like I don't. It's not my thing, you know. I don't yeah. like the. You got to go to Japan, try that. Oh, it's, uh, I wonder what that is. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe you don't want to know. <laughs> no. All so, right, so so, th so, so so what about this church? Was it pretty? I mean, you have this architectural background. Was it was it really that special? Especially since this guy was from the 1800s. Well, it was unique in the way he engineered it. Uh, he was actually using strings to calculate the. The, the uh, arches. Oh, it would, wow. It, it would do the strings upside down and it would create these arches just with a figure out how to do it with strings. No CAD software back then. No CAD software. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it was Did just, they have CAD uh, software when you were learning? No. No, yeah, I was thinking that's. In fact, I, I can't, I can't, I don't know <coughs> how to write anymore because when you're in architecture, you weren't allowed to, to write. You had to print everything. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Because there was no computers printing right. drawings, so you had to make, when you do an architectural drawing, you have to be able to read it. That's a good point. So I never would have thought of that's that. That's part of your grade, is your, pen, your, your penmanship? Yeah. Wow. So I'm a printer, I mean I print, you know. So now how long did you stay in Barcelona, and what did you, did you photograph the church? Well, my cell phone. Oh, you didn't photograph it, you just took pictures. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not, not sure. I have, I have a, uh, Wide angle adapter for my cell phone. I got a, it's a Zeiss. Wow. Zeiss lens for the cell phone. How much did that cost? Two hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. Wow. I got one for fifty bucks. I thought I was a big shot. Oh, no, this one is <laughs> sharp as a tack. Mine's though. Mine's the opposite. It's a more of a zoom, a mm -hmm. little bit of a zoom. They have a telephoto too. Wow. They're two hundred bucks a piece. No kidding. Yeah. Zeiss, both of them Zeiss. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know they made stuff for the lens. Well, you can get it at the Apple Store. Oh, I've never it has, been, it has to be an Apple phone. Yeah, I got, a, I got an iPhone. Has to, it can't be the one with the two lenses, though. No, oh, oh yeah, lens. yeah. Anyhow, okay, so, so we, you didn't, you didn't go there. That wasn't part of your, your. No, it was just an experience, Spain. Just to experience. And, so where, and where my did my daughter, the, my my wife, uh, they went with you. They wanted to see Barcelona. I want to see Barcelona too. <laughs> yeah. we, we take, you didn't invite me. <laughs> we, take, we take these little buses and you get up on top and there's, a, you know, pr you know. Oh, the double deckers. Yeah. And I love that. And go all the way. And take just go. You just take the bus and go to the whole tour. And then you can then you get off and do stuff for yourself. You know what? That's exactly what I do when I travel. Every yeah. single time I go to a big city that has those city buses, I think is the city yeah. city. I forget. It's a big company. Yeah. But I love that because you yeah. get a feel for the city. Right. You see what you want to see. Right. Okay, so where did you actually start taking the picture, the well, official we, well, pictures? Well, we, from there we went to uh, the town that uh, Dolly has his own gallery. Figueres. Figueres. Okay. And he, ha <coughs> he has a gallery, a uh, museum there that he created. Okay. Oh, he did it himself? Yes. Okay. So it's crazy. I would imagine. It's, it's <laughs> I can't imagine, crazy. but <laughs> so again, we wanted to get the feeling of Dolly. Yeah, because so how did, do you get in a, inside a mind like that? Well, actually, if you want to go back and to 1982, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 1982, we came to Florida permanently in 1980. Okay. And didn't see anything to photograph here. It's just you know wasteland. Just boring to you. But uh, Dolly opened his gallery in St. Petersburg in 1982. Oh, I didn't know that. And that's the first thing I did. Uh, so I actually went and saw Dolly's gallery. Okay. And I think it was like two months after it opened. Oh. And I created 
five or six uh, kind of Dali-esque images. Oh, you, yourself you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're a fan. Yeah. So this but was they a didn't great... know that. People at Dali didn't know that I was a fan since he was first here in Florida. Wow. And um, so, where were we at? Okay, so you were at Figueres. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we wanted to get a feeling of, of this crazy guy. Yeah. You know. So we got to um, Catechez. Catechez, yeah. How you pronounce it? Catechez. Yeah, I guess that's how you pronounce Some, it. I don't know. Something I'm like guessing. That. Like I'm that. sounding it out. I'm looking at it because I've got uh, cheater over there. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, they, we got a, a hotel there on the on the bay, overlooking the bay and look, overlooking the church and the town. It was just a, oh, sounds uh, nice. First shot I took was actually in front of the hotel. They had some of the, the the old fishing boats up on the little beach there. Oh, okay. So I got started, first got there for first day, and I guess that kind of got me excited about it. And it's a, you know it's a unique town. But there's one interesting thing about it where the hotel was. Oh, excuse me, where the hotel we stayed in. On this side, it was two ways traffic. On this side, it was one way. So you stayed in the hotel, you couldn't go that way. Oh my gosh. So you, so you had to go this road all the way around town to get over here. Oh my gosh. So we got to know the town pretty because good. Because you kept having to circle it. Around and around and around. <laughs> now, what, now that town, he did he live there? He Is lived that, in Port, Port de Goss. What was Catechus to him? He, well, that's kind of like... Is that where it's he like just was inspired? Three, or? three miles away. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's it was... like town, town. Yeah. Okay, I get it. He lived. He, he lived out with the, with the fishermen. Okay. In fact, his house start it was a little fishing huts. We started with it. Bought some little fi the fishing houses, and they kept. He kept adding, building on because yeah. I've seen pictures of his house. It yeah. looks like he just built on and right. built on and built on, and, yeah. and then you went to his house too. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you photograph that too? It was really nice that the, the people at the Dolly Museum uh, got us to go, be able to go in there before the tourists got in there. Oh wow, that would be nice. So we got to spend a couple hours uh, photographing before the tourists got there. He had this one his bedroom. Uh, it, it, He's a weird guy. Yeah, <laughs> well, I keep talking. He wanted to be the first guy in Spain to see the sunrise. Oh, okay. So he had a mirror set up. So in his bed, he could see the mirror and see the sun come up. That is weird. That's weird. But things like that. I mean, he had uh, decor. I mean, just crazy stuff lying. I saw. And the, I forget on the internet. I think they had a oh a bear that he created or something in the in the yeah. hallway or oh, the he's foyer got elf, or something. Elephants and uh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. He was he's got a right brain personality, <laughs> way out pretty, there. And his, so, his his studio was really interesting because he did big stuff. Now is this was the studio like part of the house? Part of the house? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the studio had this wall was probably about. 16 feet wide and there was a hole in the floor so he could take his canvas and pull it up paint on it oh so he didn't have to get on a ladder right oh that was brilliant yeah he was a smart guy too uh, he, worked, he worked with a lot of, lot of work he did with Disney I had no idea oh yeah he was big Disney they were both big fans of each other so you learned a lot about him. Oh yeah, it was. And how did you decide? Like, okay, so you got a feel for you went to where he lived, where he worked, where all mm. you know, where he hung out. How did you know what to photograph? Photographed everything. You just photographed everything, and then when you came home, you said, "Well, I, oh, uh, these are the ones I want for the exhibit." Or how does that? Mm, how does that actually, process for, for work me, for you? Photographing everything doesn't mean like I photographed a lot. Okay. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> uh, that whole project was done with, with digital. Okay. With Did you Sony. do it with your Sony? Yeah. Sony. Okay. 
And um, I think I shot 130 pictures in a week and a half. That's all. Okay, so that's... So I don't shoot. That's not a typical digital photographer. No, it's, it's a film <laughs> photographer. You're right, because you had to be so calculate yeah. on every shot. Right. I mean, it's why digital people. We we go click 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 click. No, no, no. That'll kill no. you. No, I'm not doing that. He says. <laughs> uh, I, I had several shots. I did the same shot four or five days in a row. Just to get the right light. Okay. I mean. So still, so back to how did you determine which what you wanted to take pictures of? It was birdie. Really? Yeah. This, I mean, this this place is like um, the desert, Monterey. It's got the ocean. It's got if you like rocks, got they a got lot of rocks. rocks. They got rocks. <laughs> they got deserts. Uh, it's a big wine industry. Oh. Uh, olive trees, because desert is like olive trees. Yeah. You know. That kind of weather and the wine country. Is it hilly and mm -hmm. okay? Oh yeah, They're getting there is fun. <laughs> Up and down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they got all these uh, roundabouts. Oh gosh, now we're starting to get them in Naples. Did you know? I mean, they we're talking about on the freeway. It's the highways or I, roundabouts. I told you I went to Ireland last year, and I. I mean, I would never drive on the wrong side of the I did drive on the wrong side of the road in St. Croix, but not with those roundabouts. I would be dead. I have hard to do them here. I know. <laughs> Going the, the right way. Yeah, but over, <laughs> the correct way. Uh, in Spain, <laughs> we, we drive the same as America. Thank goodness. Yes. Did you drive? Did you rent a car or van or something? My or? daughter drove. Oh, nice. Nice to have a daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she went to, uh, uh, in the, when you get into a, an old town like Catacas, uh, with these new cars, you got about this much on each side of it between the buildings. I was going to say they have narrow streets, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Now, did you rent a bigger car, or did you get one of those little tiny tin cans well, that they drive in? It was a big You one. got a big American car, huh? Yeah, all the <laughs> cans, this luggage. Yeah, and three your people, cameras. Three people. And, yeah. You know, and, and when I went to Italy, we rented one of those little tiny, no, little was, tin cans that you're driving around. Everybody what, has little tiny cars there. There's actually some. I can't remember the name of it. It's like a sport. It was like a sporty. It was one of those. Like an SUV? No, it was a zoom zoom car. Oh, oh. Well, yeah. you were going in style. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, and they're they're. Uh, uh, what do you call it? They. Directions. Uh, GP, you have uh, the GPS, or when they talk to you, you the, the GPS. Yeah, to yeah. tell you where to go. It was really very, very well done. Ah. A lot better than here. So it was in the car, the mm -hmm. GPS. Okay, that's nice. Oh, they also had a map and a dash. Oh, that's nice too. Yeah. yeah. That little cheap car I rented in uh, Italy didn't have anything no, like this that. Was <laughs> a cheap car. Nice car. This is a nice car. All right, so you took 130 pictures. Yeah. And how many are going to be in the exhibit? I think 45. And how did you just like agonize over which choices to make? No, I or? let them do it. Oh. So you literally only took 130. Yeah. You didn't mm -hmm. delete. Mm -hmm. You just took 130. And did you show them 130? Mm -hmm. Wow. Why would you not show them? I don't show a lot of my stuff to people because <laughs> well, I take some bad pictures. <laughs> when I was in Cuba, I did a book in Cuba uh -huh. in 2002. I took 65 images in, in 30 days. Oh my god. And 50, 55 of the 65 were in the book. Wow. I can't imagine being that I've been doing sure it for 55 years. Still. You have really, but you've got such an eye, I guess. You know what you know what appeals to people. You know what appeals to you. Maybe that is what appeals to people. What I try to do is get people in to involved in the image. Okay. And so take and one actually, I actually, I don't. I don't even look to the camera. I point and shoot. Well, you frame it first, and no, then no, you get the no. I no? point and shoot. I come up and say, I put this. this I put the tripod down. Put the camera on it. 
I, on the digital, I don't even focus. I tape my focus at F16. Okay. So I don't even have to focus. Wow. Um, all I have to do is figure out the exposure. So I set the tripod down, put the camera on, that's it. I don't look at the image. You don't even look at it after you took it? I get it that evening, yeah. I mean, not like immediately how it comes no. up on the back of the camera? Because mm. you just know what you want. That's amazing to me. <laughs> well, uh, if you can't see it, you can't photograph it. Yeah. Now, when you're... A, a film, if you realize, okay, in 2006, I did three three months tour around the United States photographing. From the, I remember for the that. American, for the I American, remember that. For the American Beautiful book. Yeah, I remember when you did that. That was big news here in Southwest Florida. <laughs> I took 1,700 shots. 1,700 in three months? Three months? Yeah. Wow. 25,000 in film. You took 25,000 pictures? Dollars. Oh, oh, oh. $25,000 is how much you spent. On the film. For 1,700 shots. For 1,700? Wow, that's expensive, huh? Mm -hmm. So you learn to take something that's good. Wow. Wow. So now this is the, the well, you were doing the large format stuff on that trip, right? Well, actually, trip, that right? trip I did uh, 12, 20, 8, 10, 5, 7. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. That 12 by 20, every time you shoot, it's 30 bucks. It was click $30. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you don't want to be shooting a lot. No, but. you're right. And do you feel like, I mean, did you take classes or did you just, you just started feeling like you started doing it? Started doing it. That's why I tell everybody I like to take classes because I feel like I'm a little bit of a slow learner. But if you don't practice, you're never going to get it. Well, I did it in school. Uh, I was, that's how I got through my architecture. I, I built architectural models and photographed them. Okay. So I had to learn how to make it look good. And what I did, I would take a picture, I'd take film, and I would go over to the, the uh, AV department. They had a, actually, the journalist people had a dark room. Okay. i take, i go to the film, i say, what it now, how do I develop this film? And they say, okay, you put this thing in like this, you develop it. And I'd say, okay, how do you make a print? So you put this in larger, and you make it the size you want it, you focus it, and you put it in there for three minutes, there for a minute, there for two minutes, there in an hour, and that's it. That's how, that was my, that's my learning process. That was your photography class. That was my photography <laughs> class. Wow. Wow. That, that's amazing. But, you know, it's funny because, you know, I told you about Joe Fitzpatrick who works here at Understand Photography, and he's super smart. He's, like, a brilliant, knows everything about photography, I swear. And, uh... One time we, we were talking about depth of field, mm -hmm. and he said depth of field is straight across. It doesn't fall off. Like if you have a shallow depth of field, it doesn't fall off on the sides. I said, wait a minute, that's not true. And I, I usually know better than to argue with him because he's always right, and I'm always wrong. But I have so much experience. I've been doing, I've been a full-time photographer for 18 years, and I've mostly used that same lens. And it turns out that lens falls off on the sides. Mm. Most don't. So it's the only time I had the confidence to argue with Joe. <laughs> well, but the experience... I've been, I've been using the same angle of the lens since 61. Oh, you've got me beat. <laughs> so, uh, I, so that's why I don't have to have look through the lens because I know what the lens does. Whether, exactly. Whether, whether it's digital, 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, 12x20, 11x14, I have the same angle of view lens for each camera yeah okay and that's true i mean to me i like to get to know my equipment everybody is like oh i'm getting this new equipment this new lens and that's like for me i got to get used to one for a few but Actually, you have a lot of different equipment you you go through you have don't tell your wife, my wife yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually with the digital world i'm experimenting a little bit more so you're still because you still haven't found your happy place there no, you're I'm getting there. Fun. You're getting there. I'm having fun. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm finding out. Uh, I'm I'm actually learning. Even this stage, I'm still learning things. Well, I think you can never stop learning, no, right? Especially no. in photography. It doesn't seem. One of the things with the proliferation of all these new photographers all the time, it's like, 
you know, I've seen some wild photography that I would have never, I, like no one would have dreamed of 10 years ago. But because there's so many people and they're all, their creative brains and juices well, working, also, coming up with some amazing stuff. Also, it's a lot cheaper now. Yeah. Well, it well, doesn't cost 30 bucks to hit, click the shutter. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see your results immediately. Kind of. Yeah. Not in black and white, but you can, you can, you can it's not like uh, shooting and have film process and make a print. And like when I did that journey around the country, it took me two months to process the film. Wow. It was six months before I saw my first print. Wow. Boy, there was no instant like, gratification then. No, there's a lot of worrying. Yeah, after three months on the road. <laughs> Do I get anything, you know? I know. I started, when I started my, you know, I started off as a wedding photographer, and I was, I was an assistant. And I remember the first time he said, go do a wedding. And it was, you know, 35 millimeter film camera, but I was terrified. I, terrified. Uh, I can't remember which one. Someone, well, back in the 60s, a friend of mine asked me to be a backup photographer for their wedding. And uh, messed up the whole thing. People think photography is photography, and it's not. So I said that it's not going to be in my list of things to do with weddings. <laughs> too much, too much pressure. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of pressure there. to do weddings. Yeah, I don't do too many anymore. Hopefully, it's a one-time situation for this couple. Yes. <laughs> All right. So your exhibit, mm -hmm. it's going to be June open June 15 or 16. 16. 16. Well, it's a private opening on the 15th. Oh. For the members of the... Oh, for the members of the museum. If you want to come a member of the museum, you can come in. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. A little far drive, though, for me. <laughs> but it'll be, should be interesting. There's going to be, like, five, five foot by nine foots in there. I was going to ask you, that was one of my questions. How big are these pictures yeah, going to be? I'm definitely going to come, because you're going to be there June 16th through November 25th. Yeah. So I got the whole summer. Right. And actually, I'm, I'm, well, you know, I go to Tampa. You know, June 15th is. It's our wedding anniversary. It's your wedding anniversary? Yeah. How many years? 55 is, wasn't it? 55. 55. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Happy anniversary in advance. <laughs> Did you do anything for your 50th? Anything special? Yeah, we went to, uh, was it, we went to California. Went home. So California, what are we doing our 50th? That was 2000. Nobody can remember the far, that far 13, back. <laughs> 2013. Oh, we, then we go to Grand Canyon? Oh, that's right. We were going to take a three-month trip. Oh, we, we were in the Redwood Forest. Remember the heart we found? Oh, you found a heart while you were on your, right around your anniversary time? There was a rock that had moss on it, and someone had put a heart on this rock. Like made out of the moss, like it cut the moss out? Yeah. Oh, how cute is so that? We had a picture taken behind the rock. That's your 50th anniversary picture. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Now, what's your next project? Our next project, well, I, we're really working on a, a new book on, we want to do a nice tabletop book on Florida. Oh. Uh, Yay, come home to us. <laughs> well, we've discovered so many uh, new places since the last books we've done. Like that cypress tree that's 53 feet in circumference. Oh, yeah. Um, that's amazing. Oh, it's just a gorgeous tree. I love Florida. I think Florida is so beautiful. Well, it's actually the most unique state, probably. That may be. I don't know. I haven't been to all the states yet, but you have pretty much anyway. I miss North Dakota. Ooh, too cold there. <laughs> well, there's Roosevelt uh, National Park there I want to see. Oh, that's right. Um, I think that's the only one I haven't seen is North Dakota. And you Dakota. missed it, didn't they? Wasn't that the place to go for uh, for something recently? Some moon stars? Oh, yeah, that was all, that started all across the country. What was that? It was the... Uh, Eclipse. Oh, the eclipse. But yeah. I think, wasn't North or South Dakota one of yeah. the best places to yeah. see it or something? Yeah. I forget. It yeah, was, and Lemoyne yeah. was here. Lemoyne yeah. John, you know him, right? Yeah, I, was, I talked to him uh, a couple of days before he left. Yeah, he was so excited. 
Uh, oh. he, he's an interesting guy. He is. And, and, and it's so exciting to have a camera store. It, and it's so funny that you have to say that because we had camera stores up until, what, 10 years ago. He's the only camera store on the west coast of Florida. And we're talking about Johnson Photo Imaging right. in Bradenton, Florida. Right. It's, it's the exit north of the university. And he just, he's done it very smart. He knows how to keep mm -hmm. a business running. A business that's hard to, to compete, you know, but they offer classes and they have a studio they rent Print, out. Printing. They do the, that's right, they've got a lab in there. So he's, you know, he's in, been in, smart. Printing. They have Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, Fuji. Uh, I was in there one day and this guy comes in and says, I wanted a, I think it's a Fuji 160 to 600 sport lens. Uh -huh. And uh, Mike says, yeah, I got one of those. So he was out playing with it and I went out to look and see what was happening. And I said, you actually had that lens in stock? He says, I got four of those. Uh -huh. I mean, he's got... Maybe it's a, is it a popular lens, or...? I guess, but, I mean, I got a, uh, I mean... It's nice to Almost be everything I've ever wanted, he has. Yeah, it's nice to be able to go and touch and feel and... He also helps me, because I don't know how to set my camera up. The digital camera? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he, The big guy you know how to set up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he helps me set the camera up. Oh, that's awesome. Although, if you have a problem, they'll help you. Okay. Good they commercial have, for Johnson Photo Imaging. <laughs> they have big, uh, inkjet papers you can buy there. They have uh, Canon printers. You know, the manager, Mike, was supposed to be on here, and he had an emergency and couldn't do it. i got to call him back and get yeah. him on my show, because yeah, Lemoyne was on the show. Yeah. So. yeah Michael is really, uh, he knows his business. Yeah. We'll get him on next. Okay, well, we got to okay. wrap up. We're oh. 5 o'clock. I told you, it goes fast, doesn't it? I, I, it's like, how could that be an hour? <laughs> so thank you so oh, much for welcome. coming. I'm so happy that you were here. So happy to meet you face to face. I've seen you talk or heard you talk several times, actually. Hopefully we had something, we had something intelligent we said today, maybe. I hope so, too. <laughs> I think so. I learned a lot. <laughs> So thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. Tune in here on the Understand Photography Facebook page next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time to watch our interview live. Or remember, you can always watch us later on YouTube or listen to us on iTunes. Next week, uh, travel photographer Kelly Walcotton will be my guest. I'm Peggy Farron. Thanks for watching episode 84 of the Understand Photography Show. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.